Whether you're into camping, hiking, or traveling, chances are you've used a dry bag. My name is DJ and this is The Bear Essentials. And today, I'm gonna to go through three of the most popular types of dry bags and when and how to use them. Hope you enjoy. I've laid out a few of the different waterproof stuff sacks and bags that I bring on different trips with me. I just wanna go through the benefits of each one and what I like and dislike about them. Okay, so starting first, we'll go with the biggest bag. There's a bunch of different companies that make styles like this. Now this is a heavy duty style bag. It's made out of 500D PVC. PVC is a soft plastic material. It's completely waterproof. When I say 500D, that 500D refers to 500 denier. And a denier in simple terms is a weight per yard of fabric. So that higher number is associated with heavy duty weight or heavy duty thread fabric. Generally I'll put my camera gear in here when I'm in the boat or on the fly if it's starting to rain. I'm gonna throw some clothes in here. You could stuff it down and basically you just press the air out and then roll. So the thing about this pack is you could only roll to this amount. You can't roll any smaller so it's not really a compression sack. It limits you if you're trying to put this inside your bigger backpack, uh, if you don't want to fill it up all the way. I mean, you could technically try to go down more, but then you're just rolling up the straps and it kind of takes up a lot of space. This is a great pack to have if you know it's going to rain and you're going for a light hike or you want to keep it outside of your bigger pack. Uh, it's completely waterproof and I really like the color, number one, and the fact that it has some decent straps on here. I know you could get roll up dry sacks like this that don't have straps and I kind of just find it limits you. This one's 30 liters but you could get smaller or larger versions. 30 seems to be a sweet spot that I like. The second option here, I won this actually in an Instagram giveaway and it is honestly the best little pack because when it's empty I could roll it up into virtually nothing and keep this in my main pack. So I could just bring this in my bigger pack and then if I wanna go on day hikes or anything, I just unroll it. It's super easy. So the fact that it's a really lightweight and waterproof material, it's just so nice. Um, it's got two water bottle holders in the side and it's also got some really lightweight shoulder straps. I kinda like these though because uh, they're ventilated and you got the front pouch here. So yeah, this one's made by Sims, which is a really reputable fishing company. I'm sure you could find equivalents in different brands as well. I like to keep this and usually not even fill it, just have it rolled up in my pack just in case I need it. So these types of bags are made out of coated nylon. This one in particular is 210D nylon ripstop that's coated. And that's how these nylon bags keep their waterproofness. They coat it in polyurethane. So it's not gonna be as waterproof as that 400D PVC and not as durable, but it's gonna be really lightweight and really packable. It's only three quarters of a pound. So this pack being the thicker material is the most bomb proof thing you could get. Like rain is not getting in there. It's very solid and resistant to punctures. And this pack I've had for a few years now and it's held up through downpours. I can't say a bad thing about it. And now we'll talk about this third pack, which is my absolute favorite. This is a true compression sack. And I'll show you what makes this thing so special. Firstly, it weighs absolutely nothing. And you could put this in your pack and just keep them without anything in it if you want, just for emergencies. I'm not even gonna take out any air from it. I'm just gonna roll it up just for demonstration. Let's see how much air is locked in there. The membrane that this has is really cool. It's completely waterproof on the outside, but on the inside, it lets air come out, but not back in. Let me show you what I mean. You could compress this, even with it completely closed, compress it down, and that air is gonna seep through the membrane. And see how it's not inflating again? Now there are a lot of packs out there that have tensioning straps just like this. But the one thing that separates this Sea to Summit event material is that you can compress it down even more and it lets air out. Some compression sacks that look just like this, you have to manually squeeze the air out. And then when you compress it down with these compression straps 
any air that's still in there is just gonna stay in there. Now there are a couple others with a little valve that releases air, and that's good too. Those work well too. But this one is just my favorite. It's so easy. I'll show you how small we could get this. So this bag right here is 15 liters and it weighs about a third of a pound, only five ounces. It's extremely lightweight and extremely packable. Again, this pack is gonna be a coated nylon. This one uses 70D nylon, so super lightweight. And then it has that special membrane that allows air out but not in. And here I'm just gonna show my 10 liter compression sack and stuffing my sleeping bag in and how small you can get it. There it is at maximum. Get some air out. Roll this guy down. And look how small that is. The more air you squeeze out of it, none goes back in. This is not demonstrating anything right here. Ah, <laughs> oh, success. There we go. See you later.